when it comes to LEGO Lord of the Rings. The word on the street is that LEGO will relaunch the Lord of the Rings theme if the new $500 Rivendell set sells well enough. If it does, LEGO Lord of the Rings will return in full in 2024. While this vaguely defined incentive is certainly convenient for LEGO's bottom line, I believe there's another reason for the 2024 timeframe, one that even cynical fans should get excited about. Welcome friends, my name is James, and I'm here to break down how LEGO Lord of the Rings will return in 2024 to line up with the new Lord of the Rings content from not Amazon, but Warner Brothers. In late 2022, it was announced that an anime film was in the works to tell the story of Helm Hammerhand, King of Rohan, about two centuries before the War of the Ring. This is an epic tale that deserves to be told, and I personally love the Rohirrim. We should be in for a treat. Warner Brothers released three pieces of concept art for this movie, and boy do they look good. On the art team are Alan Lee and John Howe, legendary artists whose work heavily influenced the look of the Peter Jackson trilogy. Additionally, Philippa Boyens, one of the Lord of the Rings screenwriters, is the executive producer on the film. Due to this, I'm pretty confident that the resulting product will be faithful to the vision of J.R.R. Tolkien. I've seen some articles panicking that Lord of the Rings will become the new Star Wars, but I don't think so. Their main warrant seems to be that Warner Brothers is simply a big studio, but they ignore the fact that the team directly involved in making the movie are quality filmmakers that have proven their dedication to Tolkien's world. Unrelated, but I think it's funny that this Screen Rant article worries that the new movies will ruin Rings of Power. That's basically like saying that James Newton Howard's soundtrack was what ruined the Fantastic Beasts franchise. Beyond that, the story itself is just awesome. There's more in-depth explanations elsewhere on YouTube, but here's a simplified version. Helm Hammerhand is King of Rohan, and he's incredibly buff. Freyka, a Dunlending who claims to have Rohiric blood, marches into Meduseld with a gang of armed men and demands that Helm let his daughter, who is unnamed by Tolkien, marry Freyka's son, Wolf. Helm is offended and backhands Freyka across the room. Freyka subsequently dies. Fast forward four years and Wolf wages a war of vengeance for his father upon Rohan. He leads an army of Dunlendings, Corsairs of Umbar, and even Easterlings, and he drives Helm back to the fortress later named in his honor, Helm's Deep. Helm and his men fight through the cold of winter, with Helm famously conducting nightly raids on the enemy camp. He would blow his horn upon each raid, and the sound came to be feared by Wolf's armies. But one night he did not return. He was found in the morning, frozen, with enemies piled at his feet, still standing, eyes open. It is said that his spirit still haunts the Hornburg. The war ended when Helm's nephew Freyalaf and a contingent from Gondor reclaimed Meduseld and slew Wolf. This story is a glorious testament to the heroism of the Rohirrim, an excellent subject for a movie, and a great candidate for a line of Lord of the Rings Lego sets. The diversity of locations, creatures, and minifigures would be great for any Lord of the Rings fans, despite only ever making three Rohan soldiers, one of which was King Theoden himself. Their design is still better than most modern minifigures. The intricacy of armor printing, unique helmet designs, and grim faces are perfect. On the larger side of things, this is probably the best opportunity we'll have for getting locations such as Aedoras, Dunharrow, and possibly even Isengard, as Isengard is controlled by Wolf at this time. Playscale versions of these locations would be truly excellent. LEGO sets based on the War of the Rohirrim are also ideal for another reason, this one having to do with LEGO's historical business strategy. LEGO doesn't like to take risks with new franchises. Their strategy is usually find a franchise that has established itself, wait for a sequel, prequel, or any other new content, and then launch a wave of sets. This is how they did it with the Harry Potter reboot in 2018, the original Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets, the Pirates of the Caribbean sets, Avatar, Indiana Jones, Jurassic Park, Cars, Toy Story, heck, even Star Wars got started to coincide with the release of the prequel trilogy. LEGO just likes this strategy of franchise starting, and it really fits all the clues here. War of the Rohirrim is set to release in April of 2024, which is coincidentally LEGO's projected time frame for the Lord of the Rings theme release. We could see a wave of Lord of the Rings sets releasing around this time a year from now. That's a long wait, but if we get sets from this new movie in addition to the trilogy we know and love, it'll be all worth it. At the moment, the best thing to do is be patient. But as true nerds, we have no patience, so we'll settle for the next best thing, making endless predictions about the future in hopes that some LEGO executive will hear us and take pity on our lowly state. 
That's all my thoughts for today, but before the video ends, I want to thank everyone who's watched my videos these last four weeks. We've got to over 50 subscribers and nearly 200 hours of watch time, which is just awesome. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful reading all the comments and hearing from you. Please subscribe and share if you found this interesting, or comment your thoughts below. Until next time, farewell.